Welcome to Discovering. Honey, it tastes great, it's good for you, and it lasts forever. Join me for a look at beekeeping. That's the queen in there. And I'm gonna lay this right at the bottom of the hive, so as soon as the bees pile in on it, they'll know that the queen is in there. And a pharaoh tells the bees that are in the air that that queen is in there. Sit back, put your feet up, that's all tonight, right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill, the eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan. Bees and honey, how does it all work? I had the opportunity to get a glimpse into the unique and amazing world of bees and beekeeping with UP beekeeper, Mike Holmes. Beekeeping has been around since the, they've taken, they've taken honey out of Egyptian tombs. Uh, that's, so it's been, it's been around for thousands of years. The, uh, I, I've been a beekeeper for 29, just my 29th year, actively keeping bees. And I helped a friend for four or five years uh, you know, with his bees before I, I learned, or I mean, I had my, my own bees. Uh, the bees, you can order them, you, and for the Upper Peninsula, we generally order them in January, early February. The bees that we get are generally taken from either the Georgia area for the pollination or the almond crop after the almonds have been, the pollination has been done with the, uh, with the, the almond trees. And this is, this is way, the way you get them. What we're gonna do is I've got frames that I've used over the years and these are already drawn out. That means that uh, we'll have a sheet of a foundation of wax, just a sheet of wax in there, and then they'll build these cells on it. And they're dark because there's microscopic cocoon, you know, the shell of it. And what the bees do is they, they go in and they clean all this stuff out. And as soon as it's nice and shiny, the, the queen will get in there and she'll lay, she'll lay eggs. This winter was critical, last winter too. Uh, you generally lose, your, lose the bees um, unless you, you do a lot of extra wrapping of the, the, the colonies. But still, uh, that's up in the upper peninsula when you got 30 below zero that that lasts for a while or 20 below zero uh, for several days um, or if you've got your beehives in a in a position like it's uh, it's out in the open that wind chill will will actually uh, kill them because the bees that you go into the winter with aren't the same bees you come out in the spring with the only the only bee that in a in a beehive honey beehive that well even a, a hornets or wasps are the queens that's the only ones that live year round and the queen will lay during the winter up until december in our area our region and and then she'll quit laying and when she when that that queen quits laying it takes 21 days to before that that last egg will hatch and as soon as that hatches into a bee, the hive temperature, which is normally when there's when the eggs when there's eggs and um, larva in it, is 96 to 98 degrees. As soon as that last bee hatches, in three weeks after she quits laying, the, the hive temperature drops to down to about 68 to 68 degrees, and she won't lay until for probably another another month, four or five weeks, depending on how many how many bees are in the colony. And then what happens is that she'll lay that first egg, and when she lays that first egg, they can regulate their heat so uh, so well that the the hive temperature, you know, drop or increases back to 96 to 98 degrees, because that that's the temperature that they they need to read their, to to uh, grow their brood, rear their brood. In 
inside the cluster of bees right here, this little thing that is hanging, you'll see this little metal ribbon. In there, at hanging to that, is this. That's what the queen comes in. The queen, she's in this all by herself. She's, a, uh, she's already mated and she's all set to go. And she's hanging down there and all those bees are clustering around to keep her warm. The bees that we get come from multiple colonies because you know when, when they're filling this they go just go through the different hives and they, they all are interested in bees they've already had queens so the queen has to be the new queen has to be in a cage and and they'll accept her after they feel that they don't have their old queens and it'll take three or four days to be shipped to the beekeeper and by that time the queen her own pharaoh is, or order will be on every one of the bees in here. So they recognize that. And that's how they go back to the, to the same colony. And any bee that has a different pheromone or a different odor will not be allowed in the colony. Right in the middle of the honey flow, and the honey flow is whenever a major uh, nectar is coming in, they will allow, they will escort a bee in from another colony. They'll take the nectar from it and then they'll escort it back out. They won't, won't allow it to be in there. On each one of these, I've got a tray with sugar syrup inside and that's uh, because of the weather here. They can't get out to get the nectar so they're going to be, you know, you got to feed them. This is foundation. This is what we, we put in if you're a new beekeeper or just when we're looking through our, our hives and we've got old comb at, uh, that doesn't look any good anymore. And it, you can have old comb, same comb for you know, 10, 15 years if you want. And they just build out on it. And that's what we call foundation. It's the foundation for the, the honeycomb. The first thing you do, you, you want to get that whole bunch of bees that are around in that, on the top of the box and around the queen. We want to get them away from it. Give it a sharp hit. And now I'm going to take this queen out. There may be some bees that'll come with that because her pharaoh, but that's the queen in there. She, she keeps going back and forth, and what you don't want to do is have her fly off because you've just lost your queen and you got a problem. Now, in the end of it, here's that cork, and then you put your finger over it quickly, and then I'll take a mini marshmallow, put that marshmallow over the hole, and squeeze it in. Remember, marshmallow's made of sugar, and the nectar that they're collecting is made of sugar. And I'm going to lay this right at the bottom of the hive. So as soon as the bees pile in on it, they'll know that the queen is in there. And the bees will immediately start, to, they'll lift up on their back legs and they'll, they'll start fanning over their, their thorax. And, it, and they have a pharaoh, and a pharaoh tells the bees that are in the air that that queen is in there. You give them a little shot, and then you go like this. Give them a good shake. They're not aggressive when they're, they're doing this because they don't know where the queen is. They don't have anything to protect. And there's not many bees left in there. And then you just set that in front of the, the hive. The remainder of the bees will go back in. And then you take your frames, put them back in. What's going on right now is like saying they're fanning that pharaoh is going out to tell the bees that are in the air from that colony is that she's in there. That's, that's where she's located right now. And you're just taking put that on like that and put that on and you secure the top that way the wind won't blow it off so now they've collected all the the nectar and brought it in and uh, produced it into honey and so what we're going to be doing today is showing uh, the procedure for uh, taking the honey off and then uh, uh, we'll go to my place and we'll you know, actually extract it and then bottle it and you'll see the whole process. So when you do buy uh, uh, a bottle of honey, you'll know exactly what the, the procedure is to, for us, a small beekeeper, to put the honey in the jar. So first thing, uh, whenever, you're, you, whenever you look at into your beehives, unless they're real aggressive, and, and occasionally they are, aggressive during the summer to make sure that their progress is going good what you you'll use smoke generally you really don't have to if you work slowly and gently but whenever you get in and deal directly with all the bees that are in there um, you've got to take a little bit extra steps and in this case what we're going to do is we've got a smoker and all we're doing is telling the bees uh, in 
at the entrance to the colony that, all right, we're here, we're gonna, we're gonna be bothering you because uh, their instinct is to go in and start uh, collecting honey in their sack. So basically you're just distracting them and keeping them busy while you're stealing their honey. Secondly, what we're gonna do is this, these are called fume boards. And what we have in this bucket is a substance called Beagle, and it's made, made by the, uh, the beekeeping uh, companies. And what it is, it's, uh, it's, it stinks, um, but it drives the bees off of the honey boxes, or the honey supers as we call them. And it drives them down so there's not a lot of bees left on top of those, uh, of the, the, the uh, intermediate supers. And so we can take a lot fewer bees back to the area where we're going to be extracting. So we'll start that. And all we do is spray this on. It doesn't hurt the honey. It's not a carryover. It stinks. When you're taking the honey off the bees, you always want to have it somewhere about uh, uh, over 60 degrees. Today uh, it was 76 already, and it's an ideal day. What, why you want to have that that type of situation is that uh, the majority of the working bees um, are out foraging, and the less bees that you have to deal with, the you know the easier, and a lot less bees are going to be around. It's easier to take the honey without uh, you know gathering any stings. So you'll light the, the smoker. I like to use burlap, burlap smolders. Doesn't burn as fast. And you just put it in the smoker like that. Give it some puffs, some oxygen. And then the next thing I do is just get some grass. And what it does is as the smoke passes over this, it cools it so it's not real hot to the bees that you're gonna be smoking. So then we close it, and now we got smoke coming out. The reason we keep these, the tops of the hives slanted like that is that on a hot day, what the bees do is there's an air conditioning. They all stand on their front legs and they, and they fan their wings so they got ventilation. It, and it's, there's two reasons for that. One, the nectar that comes in is about 70% water and they're evaporating that. So. That's what you're, you're getting. Also, it's cooling at the same time. Evaporation is a cooling process, so. And another thing, this time of the year, you'll see this when you pull the, the hive apart, you'll see this sticky stuff right here, and that's called propolis. Right now, the, the leaves on the trees, the deciduous trees, are, uh, are ready to fall. Already, the bud for next year has been, you know, created, and it's covered with this, this stuff, and it's, uh, it's called propolis. It's sticky, and the bees are smart enough that they bring this back to their hives, and they seal everything, so there's no air getting in. And, uh, and they, they usually get it from uh, maple trees, and or they even will take some from the uh, pine trees and things like that, but it's sticky. Every single lady who puts on rouge, eye, shadow, anything like that, there is propolis in that. This one has a little bit on. Usually as you work down on the boxes, because obviously the bottom ones are, they fill first. Okay, but I, so I'm gonna put this back on. I'm going to get the fume board. That'll take a few minutes. Honeybees will go up to four miles to collect nectar. The more wildflowers that you have, or in this case, if you buy a field uh, within four miles of alfalfa or clover fields, you're going to get more honey because the closer you are to that nectar source, they don't have to go that far. They can fill that nectar sack, which is one five thousandth of an ounce. You can see how the bees are exiting the colony now because of that bee go, they're trying to get away from that, that smell. When they collect it, they, they bring it in, in a, a, their stomach. It's called a honey stomach. And there's a process that starts there. And it has to be uh, right down about 17% moisture content before they actually turns in the honey. 
and at that point they they know what that percentage is and that's when they cap it and the capping is just like the if your grandmother if she made preserves and then they they poured wax over it to seal it same same difference and you can start to hear how the buzzing is increasing because they're they're trying to get that smell from that beagle out of there and at the same time they're pushing that down to the lower boxes and you can see when I took that first one off all the bees that were on it well those bees won't be on these after that beagle gets down there pump it vigorously okay there you go Let's see what we got up here yeah, 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 yeah. all right you'll see here now I've taken the taken that uh, bee uh, go off of there and I'm gonna take this and you'll see there's no bees in here now you see just a couple of few coming out I usually take two or three boxes you'll see the next box doesn't have any bees in it so the bee goat has done its job uh, God. and these things are up to 60 pounds when you're taking them off What we're doing is you, you just you gotta break the tops of the cells. You don't want to press really hard, but you want to be have firm. What you want to do is only break the, the tops. You don't want to you know break a lot of the cells. And then we bring that over and we put it in. That's what you want to see on a on a frame. It's it's full, it's full and it's wide. We use nine frames in a ten frame box, and so. They, they'll put more honey in it, and then it's easier to uh, uncap. And then drop it in here. It's a centrifugal, it spins it out. The comb, the cells themselves, they're not straight in, they're at an angle. And so it, you know, it stays in there. So what we do, once we um, uncap it, we put it like this because those cones, the cells are kind of like this now. So as it spins, the centrifugal force will draw that honey out of the cone. There's honey in this and what we'll do is, is that the honey drains off and goes in into the bucket. What uh, little comes off of the, that's stuck to the caps. The only way they, they make a, a queen is an egg that is three days old or younger and it's, it's how much honey and pollen and then that substance, that royal jelly that they get from the, the new bees, how much they, they feed the bees, That's, that determines what kind of bee it's going to be. Drones are, are strictly a, um, an egg that's laid that's not fertilized, but all the other ones are, are you know, have been fertilized. And a queen will, she'll go up and she'll mate with numerous drones in the summertime, one time, and she'll, she'll store their, those in her body for as many years as she's gonna be active. Now these bullet-shaped ones are drones. If you look close, you can see they're hatching and they're moving around there. And those are drones and those are destined to die because this time of the year. Okay, we're ready to get the Mario go around going. From 
there, what we do is we pour that in here and we let it set for about four days and all of the comb that's, that was extracted with that, all the dead bees and everything else, honey is so heavy that there's nothing that can't be suspended in it. So everything, so we've got a layer about an inch or two thick up on top with all the, all the, you know, the things that were suspended in it. Okay, and then all the, then what we do is we put it, yeah, and that is raw honey. So it's raw honey. You can't get any, this is the purest type of honey you can get. I know a lot of people at, when we're at the farmer's market ask, is this raw honey? It's raw honey. And from there, I'll take it downstairs and that's where my the bottler is. And then I'll pour it in to the, the bottler. The, the one important thing about honey is that you never put it in the refrigerator because it'll uh, crystallize a lot faster when it's in the refrigerator. But if you freeze it, because it won't crystallize when it's in the freezer. And then when you get down almost out of that quart, then you can take another one out. It, it only takes you know, an hour to, for it to get liquid again. If it does crystallize, um, all you have to do is take a pot of water and heat it, and not till it's boiling, just till you can see the little bit of a, a steam come off of it, I guess. And then take that off, and then put your put the container in there and let it set, and it'll it'll come right back. It'll, it'll come right back to liquid. Well, that's it for tonight. If you'd like to keep tabs on what's coming up on Discovering or see where we've been, you can join us on Facebook or go to 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Oh, one of them got me. <laughs>